Today in the news, Nvidia makes a huge move, Microsoft speeds up old games, and we got nice motherboards from MSI. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Nvidia. If you're someone in the market for a new GPU, you know that times are pretty hard. The miners are trying to snatch all of the GPUs and all of the scalpers are doing the same and then selling them at twice the price to miners. For cards that were literally built for the PC gamer in mind, it just isn't used for that purpose these days. Not only that, but you have tone deaf companies like Zotac getting high on their own supply. The company tweeted this picture with Zotac cards in full mining position with the caption, an army of Zotac gaming GPUs hungry for coin. Now, sure, it's probably not theirs, but a customer's rig, but still pretty tone deaf. Anyways, we might have some really good news for GPU supply. Nvidia is stepping up with an answer that could get more cards into the hands of actual gamers. Maybe. First of all, they've announced that the RTX 3060 will have its mining hash rate cut in half. Yep, half. And hopefully, that means it'll be a lot less appealing for miners. Nvidia's doing this by having their drivers step in and limit performance when it detects the specific algorithms that are used in Ethereum mining. That's great, but I also see a few issues with this. First of all, it's a software limit and not a hardware one. That means that someone, somewhere, at some point, will probably find a way around it, like with an unsigned driver or modded vBIOS. And secondly, it's only focused on Ethereum. At least, that's what Nvidia implies. I mean, sure, that's the most profitable and popular form of GPU mining right now, but there's also plenty of miners using GPUs for other cryptocurrencies. Nvidia says that the majority of cards are being grabbed by Ethereum miners though, so that's that. As for the other cards, well, we're out of luck since the current drivers support mining already, so they could just avoid updating. The other announcement is even more interesting. Nvidia is launching a lineup of GPUs dedicated to professional mining called CMP or Cryptocurrency Mining Processor. These cards are made from cores that don't meet the specs for a official GeForce GPU, so they won't impact the availability of gaming cards. Basically, CMP is designed to run at a lower voltage and frequency for optimal mining performance and power consumption. And those lower voltages should lead to longer life, which is a big plus for miners. There aren't any display outputs, that's to optimize the airflow in the rack mount situations, and it's YOMO with the amount of noise that it causes. YOMO is obviously you only mine once. So basically expect like a quadro look, except without the IO. Anyways, there's gonna be four models and these are all the current specs that we have right now. The 30HX and 40HX will be available in the next few weeks, while the higher end 50HX and 90HX will be uh, coming between April and June. Now, check out those hash rates though. They seem a little bit low for the rated power, right? For example, the RTX 3090 sucks down 350 watts and does over 110 mega hashes, but the 90HX gets 86 mega hashes for a about 320 watts. The same goes for the other RTX cards versus the CMP lineup. It really seems like Nvidia just took the rejects and made them mining cards, which is, you know, pretty efficient. So I guess it all comes down to price. If the CMP processors are less expensive than GeForce, then boom, instant win for miners. If not, well, it's hard to see the point, right? Also, the lack of display outputs means less possibility of resale on the back end. The entire point here is to take at least some pressure off of the GeForce market, but it's obviously unpredictable. What do you guys think about all this? Let me know down below. Moving on, we got Xbox in the news. If you own an Xbox Series X or S, one of the things that you might have noticed is that playing your old Xbox One games on it made them run better. Unfortunately though, you were still limited to the original frame rate cap that the game had, most likely 24 to 30 FPS. You know, that cinematic look. Well, the company just introduced FPS Boost and five games compatible with it. Essentially, games that are compatible with it get just that, an FPS Boost. You can see improvements anywhere from 60 to 120 FPS, even on the Series S. That's pretty cool. 
And lastly, we got motherboards. Aren't you a little tired of the monochromatic look that all the motherboards have? Well, MSI's got you covered. The B560 Torpedo is what I think a perfect blend of neutral with a slight touch of color. Who needs RGB when you have this thing? What do you guys think of motherboards with a little touch of color? Personally, I think that the way that MSI is doing it is mucho bueno. Anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for the catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories. This kind of feels like the final form of this set. You guys let me know what you think. Anyways, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. To subscribe to the channel, stay frosty my dudes, and I will see you on the next video. Take care.